Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, your one-stop shop for mature dialogue. We're going to get right to it. Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I am your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my big uncle, Alan Tima. Yeah, we're getting right to it. The Utah Jazz Weekly Update. Yeah. Had a pretty good week. Went two-on-one. Again. Yeah, man. They played uh, Charlotte. Los Angeles Lakers and the Miami Heat. Yeah. All right. So we'll start with the Charlotte game. That um, one thirty two, one ten. Yeah, man. They they opened them up in the fourth quarter. I mean, I tell you, that that game was closer. It wasn't. You would think that that was a blowout all game long, but it wasn't. Mm mm. It, it shows character. Yeah. Because you know you go into a game. I don't know what their mentals were, but a lot of people think it's the Charlotte Hornets, so they just don't show up mm -hmm. and Charlotte came to play they was actually up in that game double digits going in the third quarter mm -hmm. you know and uh my I mean they 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 stepped it up yeah they, they flipped the switch on them they outscored them in the fourth quarter by what 21 21 points yeah, yeah. but but the, now the thing about it is it's that defense and that's the key you know we can always go into talk about teams and how many threes and how explosive they are offensively. But if you don't play any defense, you can't win a championship. And that's the whole thing with Utah. Mm -hmm. It's about, are we going to try to find out, are they pretenders? Are they for real? Mm -hmm. And that's the type of game right there. It showed me. They, 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 they was, I feel, in my opinion, in watching that game, they... They're young. Remember, I told you that. Not young in age, but young in experience. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they came in that game as with the Utah Jazz. And they thought that a team like Charlotte Hornets would fold. Yeah. And they didn't. They came to play. And but, but before the game was before quarters. And oh. then and and before that game was over, Utah went to a level got focused and they locked in and I don't care it's not although they went on a three point barrage but I mean Nyang, Nyang and Ingles Joe Ingles I think they had 21 apiece right, how many threes they hit seven I think all of them yeah I think right they yeah behind the both of them hit seven to th with all that that's all fine and dandy but it wasn't that that stood out to me it was the point in the, where the level of where they put their defense to. Mm -hmm. And their defense, I think they, they went on like a 26 to 2 run. Yeah. That championship ball, yeah. Yeah. They I did mean, win, yeah. And they ended up winning that game 132 to 10. You would have thought that was a blowout. You know, but without watching that game, you would have thought that was from the tip that that game was a blowout. It was, but it showed that they can just, I'm not going to say they can turn it on when they want, but had they came with that same intensity, the entire game it would have been over in the second quarter but the good thing about it is that they went there they was able to get there mm -hmm. that was that's the major thing that they got there the utah jazz to, to me the whole thing with the jazz is are they for real or, or are they pretenders mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I, you know i've seen so many pretenders during the season and last week we talked about the update on their update we talked about how the loss to the Clippers would benefit them and to see how they adjusted. And I liked it. Yeah. And they did the same. The, to this week, I saw an adjustment that they made. And, and here it is. They had to make an adjustment in this Charlotte game. These are the type of games where you thought that you was going to, you know, this is the Charlotte Hornets. But you find out it's not the same Charlotte Hornets. And you come out and you compete. But when it's time to go to that level, they was able to. They don't want to pick up a habit of constantly doing that, though. They nah. need to come to play every game the same way. Well, listen, two days later, they showed up to play. They played the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers. And by the second quarter, that game was over. Yeah, that, man, they threw in the white flag. That, that was the, it, man. Yeah. The Lakers didn't come to play that game. What was that, 114 to... 114 sure. to 89, 89. Okay. Beat them 114 to 89. I mean, that, just that, to be honest... That's not something to watch. By the second quarter, I mean the the Lakers were done. 
Yeah. It, they were done. And actually, I believe in the third quarter, after some little bit after the third, LeBron went out and never came back in. Yeah. And, and they did it by committee, too. No one had over 20 points. It was just everyone got involved. Another, balance attack. Yeah. And... That's championship ball too, because sometimes some some teams play the Lakers and they feel as though they need their best players to drop fifty, right? right? Now, if you have that luxury, that's great. But the fact that the Jazz didn't have to put as much pressure on Donovan Mitchell to have to be the hero, everyone stepped up. You give me fifteen, you give me eighteen. Well, that's why the game went the way it went. Yeah, because if it was one the two players. The Lakers could have locked in, came up with a game plan to stop those one or two players. Mm-hmm. But it was a team effort. It's pick your poison. And that's what happened in that game. Yeah. This opened them up. It's like you cannot, the Lakers couldn't figure out what to do. Nah. There were just so many, so explosively, just so many on every position was just coming at them can leave anyone open it, yeah. It, yeah they they dominated the lakers man and that that win gave to be them honest a- to be honest with you i mean i'm speaking of the game but i basically only can talk to you about the first two and a half it was over by well, then anyway yeah i mean after that it was just like why am i watching this nah yeah. i just couldn't watch it you yeah know, it was it was pitiful actually yeah. they threw in the way they gave up they made them quit all right yeah, well, that that game, well, that that started them off two and zero during the week, yeah. and um, I think that particular game allowed them to go four and a half games up, mm-hmm. the first seed, overall seed right. in the NBA. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they still have the best record in the league. Still, still, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to keep saying still. Still, when you say still, it's, it's been this keep, way for quite some time. Yeah. yeah, people keep waiting for them to fall. You know, yeah. they keep waiting for them to fall, but they're there. Yeah, they're still there. Actually, this week. There's more room because Clippers took a couple of losses themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? So. Yeah, so now they're, they're still sitting atop the West yeah. and the NBA. You got to specify that, right? Exactly. The best record in the league. And so we transitioned. Mm-hmm. So they played the Hornets on Monday, mm-hmm. had the Los Angeles Lakers mm-hmm. nationally televised on Wednesday, and they played the Miami Heat last night, which resulted in a loss and gave them the two on one record. Mm-hmm. And they, they fought. You know, they didn't play their best basketball, but they, they hung in there. But I, my biggest takeaway from the game with Miami is that Utah seems to have an issue. And not all teams can do this. So this is not something they really have to be worried about. But mm. the teams that can possibly match up well with them, if they can extend their defense closer to the half-court line, yeah, it, it kind of threw them off a bit. And they right. were still in the game, but right. the, the issue was – Sometimes when you shoot so many threes, you try to get it all back at once. Had mm. they remained patient, they would have got the game. Yeah. Cause I think they lost by eight. Right. But there was a play where Donovan Mitchell, I believe he was trying to send the pass over to Ingles down the stretch. and it, That was bogey. It was bogey? Yeah. He, he, he tried to throw the pass. The pass went out of bounds. And it wasn't a, I mean, it was, it was the right pass to make. I think he tried to get too fancy with it. Yeah. And it, and and he lost control of it and it didn't really go to where he was planning for it to go. Mm. And I believe these are major plays. I believe if uh I mean he saw him open so he figured that if I can get it over there as fast as possible, but I think he got a little too flashy with it. Yeah. A little too flashy with it. If he took his time and got the pass there, I think he would if it got there, I think he would have buried it. Yeah, he would have. And and well, Based on percentages, yeah, that, that they knock them down. You more than likely yeah. would have knocked it down. But if you compare that game to the Lakers game, it was the same approach. Mm-hmm. Stat wise, it was balanced throughout going the Utah Jazz wise, yeah. going straight down the line. It was a balanced attack. Right. Defensively was the issue. Mm-hmm. They let Jimmy Butler run wild. Yeah. I think he had about thirty three. Almost I think he had did he have a triple double? Or if not to close it. to it, yeah. yeah. But he hit some timely buckets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the defense early on in the game from Miami kind of troubled them. And they, they kind of figured it out somewhat. But by that time, I don't know if they started the internal clock made them start pressing mentally. Right. And they were just trying to get it all back at once. And it, it, it See, that's it, the good thing about playoffs. The playoffs is a seven-game series. Mm-hmm. And the way Snyder's coaching... 
And most people don't look at Snyder to be an elite coach, but I believe he is. Mm. At least the way he's coaching this this season, he's, he's coach he, he's coaching his behind off. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Yeah, and being that the way the way things are going and the way he's coaching, I don't think a team can beat them in seven game series. A team like Miami, I think he can make the adjustment because you saw that they made the adjustment during that game. And I just believe that how many more adjustments can a team like a Miami, let's say Miami come out of the East and Utah comes out of the West. And that's what that's the, what the matchup is. I don't see Utah. I don't see Miami beating Utah in a seven game series. Well, no, well, they would have to make it to the finals with each other, right? In order for that to happen. But yeah. at the same time, a lot of teams, when I'm just viewing the games, when the playoff comes, they're going to their adjustment is going to make Donovan Mitchell beat us. People are not gonna. The teams are not going to allow. Well, I, I would think that they wouldn't want the Ingles and the Bogies and the Clarksons to be the reason why. Let Donovan get his 50 and we're just going to stay at home. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. But yeah. well, wait, wait. The thing about what you just said, you didn't, you didn't just name one person. You didn't just name two. You named a couple. You came at least three or four people. And you got a game plan for four different people. And so, you still haven't even mentioned Gobert. No, I understand that. No. So, so I think that's why I said when I say a seven game series, it's going to be a little different. No, it would be. For a team like Miami. For a team like Miami. Yeah. yeah. But nevertheless, they got the W mm-hmm. and ended up, you know, at that particular time, Utah was 2-1. That That's a winning record. I, you can't win them all. Right. You I just got to learn something from it. Mm-hmm. I just got a question. Different looks. I got a question. For everybody out there, all you dream teamers, all you NBA fans, all of you out there, I just, my question is to you. Do you believe in Utah yet? Because I'm tired of the is the Utah for real quotes. Are they real? Or are they pretenders? I'm tired of it. It's, you're going to hear that forever until they win a championship. Uh, I know. but Because that at, when you become a great team Mm-hmm. Or on the verge of becoming a great team, you are only the standard is championships, winning in the playoffs. Because if they don't, what's going on now? Everyone is gonna look back and say, "You see, I told you. Uh, this okay. is why you keep getting." Okay, so they say it's so. Sam- let me change my question up a little bit. Are they real? Or are they pretenders? Pretenders will go home early. In, in the playoffs, if they real, they be in, they be in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, but we only time will tell. Mm-hmm. We haven't even reached the. But the, I know that. Yeah. But there are people who think that. Like, like I said, Utah this last, going out first round. I said last last episode. They don't be watching the games, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm I don't even try to convince anyone. I just want to make people moment. understand what you when you to. what you're watching. Watch it for what you see, not about history. You know, people are always looking for these top teams. Like, you know, we know the Clippers, we know the Lakers, and Denver was there last year. You know, they're still looking at them over the Utah Jazz. Mm-hmm. And do you do, do you see Utah as a top seed, or do you see Utah as a fourth seed? Even though right now they are they are the top seed. That's my point. What I'm trying to make. Well, what they see don't matter, right? The standings is that's that's what's gonna determine who's number one or number eight. No, what's gonna determine who's number one is first round. Cause if you can be number one and lose in the first round, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna tell it all. Well, we won't know that until we we, we get. But there. I'm trying to figure out the pulse, the pulse of the guaranteed hope, mm-hmm. faith that. The Utah Jazz will be there at the end. That's what I'm trying to figure. Most people don't believe that. Yeah, okay. I don't understand that. That's for them to, to, to figure out. But as for me. But for those Utah fans. You got to watch the game. I know what they believe in. Yeah. They, 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 and when you're in contact with them through comments or 
uh, on yeah. any platform right. they believe. And you know, and it's different for a Utah jazz fan who's going through the process and seeing a group of guys grow. Right. Some individuals are just now hearing about this group and saying, "Oh yeah, they'll fold." But you have to. If you've been along for the journey the entire time and you've seen Donovan Mitchell from his rookie year, how he's evolved and he went through the whole, uh, I would say, controversy or argument about who's rookie of the year. And yeah. then you got the all-star snubs and right. you see that individual from there and where he is now. Or even Quinn Snyder has become a better coach. Rudy Gobert was at one point his focus I wouldn't say his focus but he would get bent out of shape over individual accolades like all-star games and stuff like that now he's got his max contract and he's trying to get a championship and he's in the all-star game no doubt and yeah. the Utah fans have seen all of that so this is right. like their family they grew up with him mm -hmm. so they know what's up right but those who don't watch the game I know when you didn't watch the game <laughs> yeah I, I know because yeah. I, I, when you say like they're gonna fold and they they're gonna bend or break you don't really we just stated in the first game as far as Charlotte. Right. They, you know, they came out a little lackluster. Mm -hmm. And said, Oh no, we can't lose to the Hornets. Right. Let's turn the switch and on. And turn the switch on. And I, smack I, them around in the fourth I, quarter. Although that's not good. It's not. But the simple fact that they were able in that game to turn that switch on mm -hmm. and not just try to outscore them, but to do it defensively. Mm -hmm. But they scored like 40 points in the fourth quarter of that game. I think Charlotte scored maybe 20, 21. I don't, I'm not sure. Something about that. Yeah, around there. Yeah. So, like I said, they they outscored them and put the clamps on them. Then they said, you know what? Ah, oh, we play the Lakers in two games. Oh, we're not going to come out lackluster. Right. Let's smack them around early. Second quarter. Do well, that wide course. open. Yeah. They, they, of course, they wasn't going to come out lackluster against the Lakers, but they took they took the game right out of the Lakers yeah. early. And that's how you do. That's, no that's what you're doing during the season. And then you play a team like Miami, who all they, they have a different type of culture where it's kind of similar to Utah to where it's like... It was a different type of game plan because you got to remember... Um, they just played them, and they had a bad taste in their mouth as well. But didn't have certain players. Certain mm -hmm. players are now back, and now... Because Goron had a big Goran, game. Yes. Yeah, and, and he had who, 26. Who would expect him to come back and have that kind of impact? Mm -hmm. um, although, we know Goron is Goron. Yeah. But the simple fact is, I didn't think he would come back and have that kind of impact. And that's what makes this... Not only does this make Utah's... Uh, what they what they're continuing to do, I would say not not surprising but exciting mm -hmm. is the fact that you're playing in a, a league where you're dealing with the pandemic and you got players in and out of the lineup, the opposing team. You never know who you're playing against. You can't really make adjust the adjustments you're making on the fly, just like against Philly with Embiid and things of that nature. Right. And you still come out and you get the W's. You can't win them all. If if you can break even or Win four out of five in one week, two out of one in the next, and keep that gap in the standings. They'll be all right. They'll be fine. They'll be all right. I ain't making no guarantees, but they are for real. They're if that's they're if, they're if you're asking real. me, they're for real. They're for real. All right. Listen, that's all I gotta say, man. That's that's. I think we said enough. Yeah, exactly. They're the real deal. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna wrap it up. This is Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. Once again, I'm your host, Earl Tima. Alongside my co-host for Big Uncle Alan Tima. And we out of here for the weekly Utah Jazz update. Y'all be good. Also, they play tonight. Yeah. All under magic. Yeah. And then they on Monday they're playing no, they play New Orleans on Monday. And then they come back and play Philly on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Okay. So Orlando, New Orleans, and Philly. Oh, so next week is gonna be it's gonna be nice. Oh yeah. Let's I think it. we need to do something in the middle of the week. Huh? Yeah. We'll see what up. Uh, we out of here. Team Sports Entertainment.